those of you who know me well know that there are a couple of things that I really like. One is a discussion about metaphysics, which includes philosophy, religion, science, how they all fit together, and how they affect our thinking processes. And I managed to get involved in one of those discussions yesterday and today with a fellow podcaster who was asking a, a, a really good question, which was how do we how do we frame an argument that's based on the idea of God-given rights with people who do not believe in God? And it kind of degenerated, I guess, into more of a broader metaphysical argument from my point, but it was a very enjoyable discussion, and it's something that I would like to keep going for a while. I mean, it really was an interesting discussion. The second thing I like, as you well know, as many of you have been with the show for a very long time, is sharks. Are sharks? I love sharks. Sharks are 450 million years old. Did you know that? If you were to think about that, I mean, the last Tyrannosaurus died 66 million years ago. Most of the dinosaurs lived in that 150 to 66 million years ago. Sharks have been around four times longer than that. Sharks have survived all five mass extinction events in the history of our planet. They are remarkable creatures who, in my view, and this is simply my view, are just utterly magnificent. Many of you that have been with the show for a very long time, dating all the way back to 2008, know that I have had a long fascination with sharks, particularly the fascination with the element of sharks that can bite your head off. Quite frankly, fun with news, one of our greatest segments was born from a story about a man attacking a shark that was trying to eat his dog. I love sharks. They are fun to watch. They are fascinating. They are amazing critters. And as much as I like them, and as much as I have advocated for them, and as much as I have worked and donated and supported to prevent them from being annihilated, they have raised an interesting moral question once again. Yes, we're talking about morals and ethics. We're talking about things that are difficult to come to a straight answer in. For example... Let's talk about a COVID-19 vaccine for just a moment. This is a good thing, right? I mean, the idea of having a COVID-19 vaccine, from most people's viewpoint, it seems, is an absolute moral imperative. This is something that we have to do. This is something that we not only need, but we have to have it right now. And if we don't get this, millions of people are going to die or be infected, or whatever. But what's the cost of a COVID-19 vaccine? Anybody know? Sure, it's millions of dollars. Sure, it's millions of uh, whatever. But do we really understand what a COVID-19 vaccine is going to cost us as a species? I mean, sure, there's plenty of... uh, Conspiracy theorists who will want you to believe that it's going to modify our genetics, you know, it's going to turn the frogs gay kind of thing. But what if it's deeper than that? What if there's more to it than that? What if there's a bigger problem? When you look around our world today, and I will admit that I have very little practical experience in the world of cosmetics, almost none, to be honest. I have been married twice in my life, neither of my two spouses 
are particularly involved or needed or even wanted to use cosmetics to the degree that some people do. I've been in some relationships where cosmetics were a huge deal, and of course I have daughters, and therefore we have scads of this stuff in the bathrooms. Sometimes I don't even know what it is. Oddly enough, one of the things that's used to make cosmetics comes from, dun dun dun, sharks. It is called squalene, and it is an oily, viscous substance that is highly, highly sought after to be used in cosmetics. They particularly like deep sea, or what we call pelagic sharks, sharks that live in the wide open deep ocean. And the reason for this is that they, those sharks tend to be bigger than the other sharks. They also happen to be, as a general rule, older and slower, which makes them, I guess, easier to catch. But the primary importance is that they are bigger. Why is this bigger? Matter. The squalene comes from the shark's liver. The shark, particularly the pelagic sharks, the big sharks, the deep ocean sharks, have livers that weigh as much as 30% of their entire body weight is the liver. And of course, it is filled with this oily, viscous squalene, which is so sought after for cosmetics. Why? Because it's, um, it tends to absorb really well into our skin, human skin. It's a moisturizer. We use it as a moisturizer in cosmetics. The bigger the shark, the more squalene you're going to find in that liver. 30% of its body weight is that liver. And it just makes sense. Let's get a bigger shark. Therefore, we'll have a bigger, bigger uh, source of this stuff, right? I mean, that's what it seems to be. And, of course, the squalene that is used is made into the cosmetics and is also used as a nutritional, I, I, I have to be careful how I say this here, these vitamin companies, I guess, they, they squash it up, put it in a pill, and you can take it for healthy skin because it's squalene. It helps your, helps your skin stay moral, or moral, helps your skin stay soft. The moral question, though, is cosmetics versus conservation. The ethical questions here are the impacts that this is having. The use of squalene in cosmetics, and obviously in, what do they call that business? The, the, the vitamin health food business is immense. Three million sharks per year are killed solely for their livers to harvest the squalene. Three million sharks a year. It's a big number. If we were killing three million, I don't know, koalas a year solely to have their pancreas, do you think anybody would be raising any objections to this? If 3 million cats were being harvested every year solely because we needed their, one of their glands or something for something completely unnecessary, cosmetics, you think somebody would be raising some, some stink about that? The problem is, of course, these are pelagic sharks. You never see them. You can live your entire life and never see a shark outside of an aquarium or on TV on Shark Week. And that doesn't really count because you didn't really see him. You just saw a picture of him. You can live your entire life and never see a pelagic shark, a big shark. So when you're putting this stuff on your face, do you even notice that it happened? Do you even notice that some of that material came at the expense of a shark's life? Because once you take its liver out, it can't swim. It can't float. 
Sharks do not have float bladders. They have giant livers, which are filled with this squalene, this viscous oil material that helps them to float. Otherwise, they'd just sink to the bottom and drown. The obvious answer here is that the use of squalene has become problematic. And many, not whole, but many cosmetic companies have agreed to stop using squalene or its derivative squalane, squalane in, their, in their cosmetics and to, to use more uh, plant-based materials, which of course probably displeases women everywhere because now, well, you know, my, my beauty cream isn't working as well. How come? Well, because it doesn't have shark squalene in it. Now it's got plant material in it, and we just didn't figure that killing three million sharks a year was worth your face looking like it did 10 years ago. People get old. That's natural. People smearing shark squalene on their face is not natural. Yes, I'm biased because I love sharks. I love sharks more than I love most people. There's a few, but not many. And for me, it's not even an, it's not even a hard decision. I say to my wife, let's not use this stuff anymore because they're killing sharks to make it. And my ethical decision, based on what I would hope would be a moral system that our nation and our culture has, which is appalled by the useless sacrifice of millions of animals for vanity, it may not change anything. They may not kill any less sharks this year than they did last year for this, but at least we are not participating in that. Which brings us to, of course, the real conundrum and all this. It's easy when you look at this from a mm, cosmetic standpoint. No one is going to die because they don't get their cosmetics. Killing all these sharks, however, damages the ocean. Well, the ocean needs plenty of sharks as the top predators. They keep fish populations strong, keep disease from spreading by removing sick, diet, or dying. They're apex predators on land as well as on the sea. Make sure that the strongest of species they prey on survive and thrive. Evolution 101. But here we get to the moral versus ethical problem. Morality, by the way, is defined as a community deciding and agreeing on what the standard is. Moral, morals are, are community-based. What, what will we allow? What will we tolerate? What will we accept as a community? Ethics then become how an individual interacts with those standards. Maybe the moral standards are here, and I decide ethically that I'm going to act here. Perhaps. There are laws which make it illegal for me to not meet up to the standards. Maybe there are rewards for exceeding them. But in any case, if you want to have an argument about those things, you have to understand what you're arguing about. What's the end goal of things? What is the goal of these moral standards? Why do my ethics need to revolve around those? What, what is my goal? What if my goal is different than your moral standards? then you're going to say, my ethics are bad. You see what I'm driving at here? The problem that we have is COVID-19. Dave, what the heck are you talking about? I can hear you say, I can already hear your keyboards clicking. What are you saying, Dave? COVID-19 is divisive at best. I don't pretend to be a scientist. I'm not. I do know that I can observe what's happening. And as I have said all along, if what we are told about this virus is absolute truth, then we're doing everything wrong. 
If this virus is indeed the most infectious, most dangerous respiratory virus to ever exist in the history of mankind, then obviously we're handling everything wrong. But now we've reached the point where we believe that we have a vaccine in production, in in training. We believe that we have this vaccine is on the way. We're being promised this by every level of government, both parties have promised us that a vaccine is coming. We're not allowed to ask the question, do we really need a vaccine for this? I mean, it has basically a 99% survival rate. Yes, it kills the weak, the old, not the strongest of the species. It's an apex predator in some ways, isn't it? Do we really need a virus? We're not allowed to ask that question because we're told that every life matters and we must develop this virus. We must have this vaccine. We must have this defense against this horrible, horrible virus that is so devastating to us. But this this vaccine requires something. Will vaccines do? I don't know if you knew this or not. Hundreds of millions of horseshoe crabs are being sacrificed for these vaccine tests. Nobody cares. Vaccines have within them something known as an adjuvant. An adjuvant is an an additive to a vaccine that enhances things. Specifically, in the case of vaccine, it creates a stronger immune reaction than you would get without it. And guess what the adjuvant for the COVID-19 virus is? And if you think about this at all, you'll understand why it's, uh, it makes sense. If you understand anything about the virus, how the virus works, and what needs to happen, you will know that oils destroy viruses. Oils tend to make viruses slippery. They can't grab onto things. Their hooks don't work. And one of the best substances for this, of course, is squalene. And to produce a COVID-19 vaccine, Smithsonian Magazine informed us today, could require the sacrifice of 500,000 sharks solely for their squalene, solely for a COVID-19 vaccine. Just think about it for a moment or two. Three million sharks a year are being killed already solely for squalene, whether that's cosmetics or health uh, health nut type stuff. An additional 100 million are being killed every year for what is euphemistically called overfishing. What that's code for is shark finning, which thankfully is becoming illegal in many places around the world. But as I have discovered over the past 10 or 15 years, If I say I'm opposed to shark finning, do you know what I'm called by some? I'm called a racist. Because in some cultures, the moral standard is we kill sharks because we like their fin to decorate our soup. And so my moral standards, my community's moral standards, as I've seen around the country, particularly on ocean coastal states, has been that this is appalling, and we have decided that we're going to set ethical standards that match our moral standards, and we're going to ban this practice here in the United States. But even here in the United States, there are some cultures, subcultures, that have said, "Mm, your moral standards, our ethics don't, don't match, and so we're going to continue to shark fin, which is an appalling, horrible thing 
They catch the shark, they cut its fins off, they throw it back. Shark has no fins, can't swim. <sighs> We're destroying an ecosystem. And when the sharks are gone, what happens to the ecosystem? In the lower populations, the sick, the dead, the dying, what happens to the concept of evolutionary thinking with regards to survival of the, str survival of the fittest? What happens then? It gets thrown out the window. It gets modified. As I've said so often, mankind, an evolutionary creature, is the only evolutionary creature that has evolved the ability to change his environment. Sharks can't shark fin. Oddly enough, orcas can. <laughs> I don't know if you knew this or not, but orcas like to grab sharks by their fins and rip their livers out. I'm not making this up. Orcas love shark livers, but they're not killing 300 million or 100 million a year, 103 million of them a year. They're killing 10 or 20. The problem here now becomes one of questions, moral questions, ethical questions. If shark finning was ended today, cosmetics were ended today, and 103 million sharks weren't being killed every year solely for vanity, or decorative soup, would 500,000 sharks be an acceptable sacrifice for a COVID-19 vaccine? But how close are we to the tipping point where we don't have enough sharks to maintain the ecosystem that we need to have in order for us to survive? Are we a million sharks away from that? Are we a quarter million sharks away from that? Is this 500,000 sharks that we now need for their squalene for this COVID-19 vaccine really a smart thing to be doing? And in keeping with the idea of arguments about how you reach people with, with discussional argument points, we have to determine the end goal of each side of the argument. Some of us, and I'll put myself in this category, want to save sharks and want to save the oceans because we understand the broader implications of destroying ecosystems. I'm not a tree hugger by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not a person who believes that we put nature, we put a shark life ahead of everything. But an ecosystem is more than a shark. And I want to save sharks and save the oceans. Some believe that we should save human lives at all cost. I'm Jewish, and I know that the Torah teaches me that there is no commandment that cannot be broken to save a human life. Human life is so precious that it has to be protected at all costs. That's the teaching of my faith, my community moral standards. But my ethical standards now have come in conflict with that because I don't personally believe that 500,000 sharks for their squalene is worth it for a COVID-19 vaccine for, a, for an illness that I personally do not believe has been shown to even need a vaccine, let alone one requiring the sacrifice of half a million sharks one time. What about next year? I mean, is it like the flu virus? I mean, do we have to keep modifying it each year? Is COVID-19, you know, is it mutates a little bit? Now we got to kill another half million sharks? The science, it should be easy. It should be, go. You know, what does the science say in this? But the problem is our science has become politicized to the point where now, literally, Rod sent me a a funny video today about don't bother looking for articles anymore just enter your position and we'll find them for you the science in this literally will be interpreted by both sides to support their position there will be those who will say oh 500,000 sharks isn't enough to matter and there will be those who will say it's going to destroy everything is it worth the human life 
other predators might evolve. Dave, how do you know you're not how do you know you're not stopping that? We may never know the real answer. We probably never will know the real answer. Whichever course we take, we will most likely never know the real answer here. It will be generations from now. It will be literally hundreds, if not thousands of years from now, before we know whether or not COVID-19 or the death of another half, a, another half a million sharks really affected things. I guess in the long haul, you could say the asteroid's coming. We're all going to die anyway. So maybe that's one way to look at me, you know, eat, drink, and be merry for there may not be a tomorrow. In the moral and ethical arguments of this, the only way to communicate is to understand where the other side is coming from. If you want to convince me that the COVID-19 vaccine is an absolute moral imperative, you're going to have to show me definitively and without doubt that it can be done safely by not destroying our ocean ecosystems. And if I want to convince you who believes that the COVID-19 vaccine is absolutely a moral imperative, while I believe protecting our ecosystem isn't a moral imperative, I'm going to have to convince you that there are alternatives, that there are other ways, like cosmetics can go to the plant-based adjutants. Why can't you do that? Ultimately, I believe that's probably the answer that they will come up with, but so far, all we know right now is they want 500,000 sharks livers. And they don't want the small ones, folks. They want the pelagics. Which means that an additional half million sharks, at least, will be sacrificed for this. We may never know the real answer. We may never know which was really necessary. But if we save one at the expense of the other, then what?